We might be thinking about something different in our chest, but it's not a secret to Allah. He knows what every single one of us is thinking. So Allah is our creator. He created Adam. And from Adam, he created his wife Eve. And from them both, Allah created countless generations of men and women. And from Adam lineage, Allah created people from Africa, Arabia, Asian, white, black, everybody different colors and language so that they can know one another and not despise one another. This is what Allah says in the Quran. So no other God that the people worship besides Allah, they're able to do what Allah does. So if you study the religion of Islam, it's the only religion on the face of the earth that calls to the worship the creator of the heavens and the earth without any partners. So if there's any non-Muslims in here, maybe if you can read inshallah yourself, and you would know why I chose the religion of Islam as my religion. And basically, Allah guided me to the religion of Islam. This is a nitma, it's a blessing from Allah to be a Muslim. If it wasn't for Allah, I probably would, I wouldn't have chosen the religion of Islam as my religion. But Allah opened my heart to the truth. And alhamdulillah, I ask Allah that I die as a Muslim. That's the main important thing right now. Do you have any affiliation with uh, the nation of Islam? And uh, if not, or if you are, uh, what are your views on that organization? Well, basically, alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. The nation of Islam, they're not Muslims. The nation of Islam, for example, is an organization, it's a man-made religion that started in America on the streets of Chicago somewhere. And it was by a guy by the name of Elijah Muhammad who told black people, African Americans, that the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah, is a black man. <laughs> and then he said everybody with white skin are devils. This is what the nation of Islam teaches. The nation of Islam said that there was a prophet after the prophet Muhammad. And his name was Elijah Muhammad, a former Muhammad, one of them guys. And we know as a Muslim, if you think or believe that it's a prophet or a messenger after the prophet Muhammad, then you're not a Muslim anymore. Or you're not even a Muslim if you believe that. Because Allah says in the Quran that Muhammad is the seal of the messengers. The prophet وسلم, said there will be no other prophet after me. So the nation of Islam, they're not Muslims. They believe system, they call to racism, they call to worship of a man. And as a Muslim, we only worship the creator of the heavens and the earth, and we don't worship any men. Uh, have you quit music 100%? If so, uh, was it hard in the beginning? Or was it like a revelation that just came naturally? No, it was one of the hardest things that I went through in my life, because this is something, all I knew was music. So it wasn't until the brother showed me some proof in the Quran and the Sunnah that told me I should walk away from the music. I was able, by the permission of Allah, after a struggle, I was able to walk away from it. But one of the things we had to realize is that things not going to come easy. It's not like I became a Muslim, took Shahada, threw all my CDs away, and just going to the magic. It's a struggle. I'm still struggling with myself, and it's still some stuff that I'm fighting. So that's all we have to remember as long as we keep struggling. Take the baby steps, inshallah, everything will be good, inshallah. What is the most hap what is the happiest memory of your life? The happiest memory of my life is um, when I took Shahada, alhamdulillah. When I accepted the religion of Islam. That was the first time in my life I was happy. Also, if I can remind the people that this is only for the Muslim men, the non-Muslim men, I'm not trying to put the Sharia on you. But the Muslim men, we know clapping is only from the woman. You know, as a Muslim, we don't supposed to clap if you're a man. This is a feminine attribute to, for the woman, so we shouldn't be clapping. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Peace! Allah Akbar! Peace! Allah Akbar! Peace! Allah Akbar! Peace! Allah Akbar! What is the current situation for Muslims in the U.S.? Alhamdulillah, man, the Muslims in the U.S., we have it good, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, for example, I was explaining to the brothers yesterday, if you go to Philadelphia, even the non-Muslims, they dress like Muslims now. So many Muslims to the point that even the non-Muslims, they wear their pants above their ankles. Now, non-Muslims, they grow beards in Philadelphia, they wear kufis. It's because the Muslims, mashallah, they have a very strong firm hold in the cities of America that even the non-Muslims started to dress like us. Muslims have it good, alhamdulillah. As long as you practice your religion, you don't fear nothing but Allah. You practice the Quran and the Sunnah correctly with the correct understanding of the Sahabas. Allah will make things easy for you. And if anything go bad, we know that it's our own selves that we blame. So as long as you practice a religion, man, no matter where you at, 
the whole earth belongs to Allah. And if you want to be a Muslim, you should be proud to be a Muslim because this is your rights that Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, put upon you. So alhamdulillah, the Muslims in America, we have it easy, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Uh, is it true or is it your point of view that uh, the music industry or is directly or indirectly in, in war with the religion? Opposite of the religion? I believe, for example, it's not really what I believe, first of all. You know, we have, as a Muslim, we have legislation from the Quran and the Sunnah. And we have a way of life that Allah chose his way of life and he knows what's good for us and he knows what's bad for us. The music industry is a business, like I said, it causes mostly everything evil. It causes fornication, it causes to drink alcohol, it causes to party, it's calling to disrespect women. It causes to drinking weed, I mean drinking alcohol, getting hard, just, just destroy yourselves. So if you think about that, you weigh that against the religion of Islam, and this is a religion that calls to all upright morals. You will see that it's two different lives, and it's a contradiction life that a person, Muslim or non-Muslim, or any that want good for themselves, they will run away from that life. Especially for the Muslim, this is not something that the Muslim should be involved in. I've been there and done it. I was in the music industry for 13 years. Alhamdulillah, I'm thankful by Allah that I was able to walk away from it. I didn't walk away from the music industry because I wasn't selling records anymore. When I walked away from the music industry, we were still making money. I walked away from it because it's an evil lifestyle. Probably an obvious one, but uh, did Tupac and Rap Life have a big impact on your life? <laughs> well, Tupac was the reason I got into the music industry was with Tupac. So, um, yes, you can say. <laughs> Could you tell a little bit more, if it's not too private, but a question a little bit more about the killing of your parents and your childhood in general? My mother and father, when I was three years old, they got murdered by some people that was very close to my family. I also got shot in the foot during the killing of my parents. The people that killed my mother and father, actually one of them was the guy who gave me my name. He the one who named me Mutar. He was a, um, my so-called godfather in Jahiliyyah before Islam. And even though my parents, alhamdulillah, they both accepted Islam, they were still ignorant about a lot of stuff. So we still had godparents and things like that. What happened is that my father was into diamonds. He was a diamond dealer. He was 27 years old, making a lot of money. And the people decided to rob him and kill everybody, even the kids. When they went to court and the judge asked them, why didn't you kill the kids? They supposed to kill me and my brothers. They said because they ran out of bullets when they were chasing my mother. So they had the intention to basically kill all of us. But alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of planning. This is the decree of Allah. This is what Allah written over 50,000 years before he brought the creation into existence, so alhamdulillah, I'm not mad at nothing, you know? Alhamdulillah. Uh, how do you get motivation to stop drinking alcohol and uh, pray five times a day because you could be uh, practicing Muslim? This question is good because many of us in America who come from Jahalir, we we experience that lifestyle. Myself personally, when I became Muslim, I was heavy into drinking alcohol because I didn't know the knowledge that drinking alcohol was haram. I didn't get to that level yet. And I remember when I got to that point where I had to stop drinking alcohol, it was hard for me because I spent about six, seven years of my life every single day getting drunk, every single day. And I just started making dua to Allah, begging Allah, praying to Allah. And I remember Ramadan came and I told myself, man, this is it. I have to fast this Ramadan seriously. The last Ramadan, I was ignorant, so I would break my fast with alcohol, because this is what I thought was cool. So when this Ramadan came and I got the knowledge, I, I asked Allah and I said, man, I just need the strength to do it. Alhamdulillah, I make dua to Allah. You'd be surprised the weapon of praying to Allah and begging Allah. It's not like we ask Allah one time and we give up. Even if we have to put our head on the floor and ask Allah every single day, we beg Allah. Allah, is he's the one who answered the prayers. So it's very important, man, even if you have to get, the scholars of Islam say, even if you have to get um, professional help. If you're addicted to a certain drug, you got to get some type of professional help. Go to the rehab. Go to the rehab. As long as it's not putting you on other types of drugs and stuff like that. But if this is what you have to do, man, don't be ashamed to better yourself. You know? <laughs>